Tag TV brings you daily news bulletin from India. Breaking news and views from India. Good evening, welcome to South Asia Newsline. I am Uzma Jafri. Here are the top stories we are tracking for you on Friday, the 25th of October. 98.3% polling recorded in first ever local polls in India's Jammu and Kashmir. Bangladesh sentences 16 to death for killing teenager in harassment case. And Hindus across India throng markets to buy gold utensils on auspicious Dhanteras festival. And now for all the details. Indian Northern Jammu and Kashmir held its first local elections amid tight security on Thursday. The elections saw unprecedented voter turnout with Srinagar recording historic 100% voting. India's northern Jammu and Kashmir held its first local elections amid tight security on Thursday as the government makes efforts to restart political activity after it revoked the special status of the province in August. According to the Election Commission, the Bloc Development Council or BDC elections in Jammu and Kashmir witnessed a total 98% voting with 100% voting in Srinagar. Briefing media late Thursday evening, Jammu and Kashmir's chief electoral officer while announcing the final results of BDC election said that a total of 217 independent and 81 Bharatiya Janata Party or BJP candidates were declared winner. In Kashmir division, out of 137 blocks notified for election, 109 independent and 18 BJP candidates were elected. In Jammu division, out of 148 blocks, 88 independent and 52 BJP candidates won the BDC election. In Ladakh Division, out of 31 blocks notified for election, 20 independent and 11 BJP candidates were elected. We a report the total voting percent 98.3%. The highest in district was 100% polling. And the lowest was in Pulwama and Shopian. Meanwhile, Indian Prime Minister Narendra Modi's ruling Bharatiya Janata Party retained its control over Western Maharashtra province on Thursday and was left scouting for an ally to keep hold of Northern Haryana province. At a function to celebrate the performance of the party in the assembly elections, Prime Minister Narendra Modi lauded the spirit with which the party fought the elections. BJP and regional ally Shiv Sena party swore up a comfortable win in Maharashtra, cornering 160 of the state assemblies, 288 seats, according to the Election Commission of India. In Haryana, the BJP with 40 seats emerged as the single largest party and the main opposition Congress with 31 has emerged as the second largest party. All in all, the Haryana mandate leaves room for a post-poll coalition government. Terrorists struck on Thursday for the third time in 10 days in Shopian district of India's Jammu in Kashmir, killing two truck drivers who had gone to ferry loads of apples. Terrorists set fire to three trucks in Shopian district of India's Jammu in Kashmir and killed two drivers transporting apples on Thursday. Another truck driver was reported injured in the incident, while two were shot dead. The latest attack comes as earlier this month, three other killings of traders and drivers were reported in the region, while more are still being treated in the hospital. Truck drivers expressed their concern over the terrorist attacks and demanded the government to ensure their safety. The incident comes as postpaid mobile connections were restored and businesses started trading in Kashmir Valley despite threats from terrorists who have targeted migrant workers like truck drivers and orchard workers to discourage them from showing signs of normalcy. 
postpaid mobile connection that was blocked since 5th of August when the center revoked the special status of Jammu and Kashmir province was restored in the region last week after over 70 days. News just in. A Pakistani court granted bail on Friday to jailed former Prime Minister Nawaz Sharif on medical grounds. Sharif is serving a seven-year jail sentence after a conviction for corruption last year. Residents across Pakistan have been facing the brunt of slow economic growth rate and unemployment and inflation are on a rise in the country. The ongoing economic crisis has shattered the people's faith in a government elected on a pledge to create jobs and eradicate poverty. Pakistanis have been continuing to feel the pinch as economic growth rate is slowing down. Unemployment is at a record high. Prices of commodities are soaring and massive job loss is staring in many sectors of the economy. The ongoing economic crisis has shattered the people's faith in a government elected last year on a pledge to eradicate poverty and create jobs. An International Monetary Fund or IMF's report released this month has forecast bleak economic indicators for Pakistan for fiscal year 2020. The report states the unemployment rate in Pakistan is expected to rise from 6.1% to 6.2% in 2020. पहले से जो लोग काम कर रहे थे वो हजारों की तादाद में लोग बेरोजगार हो रहे हैं तमाम किस्म के कारोबार तमाम सेक्टर्स उनमें कारोबार दिन ब दिन कम हो रहा है और डाउन साइजिंग हो रही है On the other hand the IMF report forecasts the inflation rate in Pakistan to surge as high as 13% in 2020 from 7.3% in 2019 सूरत हाल दिन ब दिन भयानक तर होती चली जा रही है आलमी मार्केट में तेल की कीमतों में इजाफा शुरू हो गया है अगर ये मजीद इजाफा होता है तो इसका मतलब ये होगा कि पाकिस्तान जैसा तरक्की पजीर मुल्क मजीद मुश्किलात का शिकार होगा पाकिस्तान हैज सिक्योर्ड अ प्रोविजनल 6 बिलियन डॉलर आईएमएफ लोन इन अप्रैल इट फॉलोड अ शार्प हाइक इन टैक्स रेवेन्यूज from the country's massive debts, rampant corruption and widening fiscal deficit, there seemed to be a little hope for the shaky economy. Moving on. A protest was held recently by Baloch women and children in Quetta city against enforced disappearance of their community members by Pakistan. The protesters said political activists and intellectuals are being abducted illegally by security forces in Balochistan. Baloch women and children carried out a protest earlier this week in Balochistan's Quetta city, demanding immediate release of their community members who have been illegally abducted by Pakistani security forces. The protesters said that a large number of political activists and intellectuals are being abducted illegally by the security forces from various parts of Balochistan. The demonstrators were also joined by family members of Rashid Hussain, a Baloch political activist and student who was abducted from UAE and later deported to Pakistan. Similar protest against enforced disappearances by Pakistan was held in Quetta earlier this month. Activists have long accused that Pakistani army and its spy agencies operate with impunity in Balochistan and use enforced disappearances and extrajudicial killings to muzzle dissenting voices in Balochistan. In news from Bangladesh, 16 people, including the principal of a religious school in Bangladesh, were sentenced to death on Thursday for burning alive a teenager who refused to withdraw sexual assault charges against her head teacher. Sixteen people, including principal of Madarsa, a religious school in Bangladesh, were sentenced to death on Thursday for burning alive a teenager who refused to withdraw sexual assault charges against the principal. The perpetrator support kerosene over 18-year-old Nusrat Jahan and set her on fire on the roof of her madrasa in April in the southeastern district of Feni. Police said in their charge sheet the murder was carried out on the orders of the principal. 
Jahan's death sparked public outrage and mass demonstrations calling for her killers to be punished. She had faced pressure to withdraw a complaint to police in March accusing the school principal of attempted rape, her family had said. Ancestral pottery business in Nepal's ancient town of Bhaktapur has come under threat as potters preserving pottery from years face shortage of clay. The potters now have to travel to far-flung areas to get the right quality of clay which costs them more, giving less profit. Every year during the time when potters in Nepal used to be busy preparing traditional earthen lamps during Tihar, the festival of lights, the artists this time are confused whether to continue the business or not. A porter in the country's ancient town of Bhaktapur, where pottery is an ancestral business, said he never thought of switching his business, but now the time of weariness has arrived as the clay used to make potteries is running out. Porters in the area used to bring the clay from a nearby locality where it is found in abundance, but the area is now being replaced with human settlement. They now have to arrange the clay from other far-flung areas that cost them dearly. People living in and around Nepal's Bhaktapur town have been preserving and promoting pottery since years. Most of the potters in the region have inherited the craft from their grandparents, with some having experience near to half century. Though their business is under threat, they are determined not to leave the business at any cost. Students in India's Dehradun town who have been studying with the help of a scholarship funded by Nobel Prize winner Abhijit Banerjee expressed their gratitude towards him for helping them in a getting a better education. Indian origin Banerjee had set up a memorial scholarship three years ago in remembrance of his son. Students from India's northern hill town of Dehradun who have been studying with the help of a scholarship funded by Nobel Prize winner Abhijit Banerjee expressed their gratitude towards him for helping them in getting a better education. Indian-born American economist Abhijit Banerjee, who on October 14 won the 2019 Nobel Economics Prize, has set up a memorial scholarship three years ago in remembrance of his son, who passed away in an unforeseen mishap. Students Aryan Thapa and Aman Dabral, both of who come from a humble background, are since then studying in a school in Dehradun city with help of the scholarship. बहुत ज़्यादा दिल से धन्यवाद भी देना चाहता हूँ कि वो हमें सपोर्ट कर रहे हैं और अपने जीवन में सफल होने के लिए हमारा बढ़ावा दे रहे हैं. 58-year-old Banerjee, along with his wife, a French-American economist. Esther Duflo and American economist Michael Kramer won the Nobel Prize this year in economics for their work in fighting global poverty that has helped millions of children by favoring practical steps over theory. Celebrations for Hindu festival of lights Diwali began in India on Friday with Dhanteras a day considered auspicious for purchasing metals. Jewelry showrooms and markets were buzzing with customers who came to purchase gold and utensils on the auspicious occasion of Dhanteras. Jewelry showrooms in India's western Rajkot city were buzzing with customers who came to purchase gold and gold mid ornaments on the auspicious occasion of Dhanteras on Friday. Dhanteras, which falls two days before Diwali, the Hindu festival of lights, is the country's busiest gold buying day as it is considered auspicious to buy precious metals and utensils. People on the occasion also buy gold coins with engrossed pictures of Hindu god of knowledge Ganesha and the goddess of wealth Lakshmi. Today is a very auspicious day to buy gold and since morning we have been seeing a lot of rush and a lot of people coming to buy gold today since it's a very auspicious day. Similar scenes were witnessed in northern Kanpur city where people on the auspicious occasion flocked to jewellery shops to purchase the yellow metal. Markets in the city were also glittering with various commodities for the people to choose and mark the occasion. Dhanteras, also known as Dhanantra Yodashi, is the first day that marks the festival of Diwali in India. During the festival, cows and her calf are also worshipped. 
Well, that's all we have for you from South Asia this evening. Now our viewers can watch the show on SouthAsianewsline.com. You can also visit us on Facebook.com slash SAsianewsline and follow us on Twitter at SAsianewsline. That's all in tonight's edition. We will see you same time next week. Have a great weekend. Tag TV brings you daily news bulletin from India. Breaking news and views from India.